Good morning and welcome to our worship on this Trinity Sunday, the Sunday when we focus on God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It's great that you could be with us today. My name is Sarah, I'm vicar at St Barnabas and I'm joined by Ian. Good morning. Um, who is a minister in training at St Barnabas and also my husband. So we are allowed to be together. So we're going to begin our worship by singing a wonderful hymn, a hymn to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, angel voices ever singing. Let's worship together. mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and, and also with, with you. Let us hear Jesus' blessing on those who follow him and in these confusing and difficult times be reminded of how we strive to live. Blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us confess our many failures to keep this way of truth and life. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. Amen. So as a forgiven people, we praise God by singing the Gloria together.
prayer for today. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love, that we may truly worship you. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Michael now brings us our first reading from the book of Isaiah. Reading from Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 17 and 27 to the end. <clears throat> Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span? enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance. <laughs> Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or as his counsellor has instructed him? Whom did he consult for his enlightenment, and who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding. Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough, nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him, they are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We worship with Christians near and far, living and departed, old and young. God's word is for all of us. May it be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. What do we know about the Trinity? Do we know them? Well, let's look in the Bible and see what it has to say about them. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. A wonderful opening to the scriptures and a very pleasant image of God, his Spirit hovering over the world that he created and loves. Quite a majestic image showing the power and scale of God, surveying, planning and preparing a world for us. This image of power and majesty is amplified in the Isaiah reading this morning. 
Who has directed the spirit of the Lord? Or as his counsellor has instructed him? Whom did he consult for his enlightenment? And who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? No one. He is the beginning and all knowledge and power. So throughout the Old Testament, his spirit is central. When David was anointed in 1 Samuel, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day on. So here was a shepherd boy, empowered by the spirit to lead God's people. And in Judges, then the spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon with great power. He was empowered by the spirit to lead and rescue Israel from her enemies in the east. Again in Judges, with Samson we have, at that moment, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him and he ripped the lion's jaw apart with his bare hands. So empowered by the spirit, all things are possible. So we hear about the spirit in a prophecy about Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2, the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. To the spirit of God, a God who is spirit. And we believe that that substance of that spirit is working in the three persons of the Trinity. So we know that Jesus was God and he was with the Father before his short time on earth. We are told this in John 1. In the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God. And the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. Then at the baptism of Jesus, John the Baptist testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. So the voice of God confirmed that Jesus was his son. So the Trinity are all present here. Now after this, the spirit remained in Jesus, leading him to the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil, strengthening his faith. Then leading him to the synagogue where he proclaimed his ministry on earth with a very well known Old Testament prophecy, revealing himself as the Messiah. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners. So a good list of actions that the spirit of the Lord will empower. And when the time came near to leave his disciples and return to heaven, he comforted them with these reassuring words about the Holy Spirit. But in fact, it is better for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. So when Jesus promises the Holy Spirit to his disciples, he clearly talks of the Holy Spirit as a person. In John chapter 14, verses 15 to 17, if you love me, obey my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads in all truth. The world cannot receive him now because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognise him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. They already know the Holy Spirit through Jesus and now they will know him as he lives in them. The same relationship that we are privileged to share today. And this passage made it easier for me to understand the Trinity as he talks about the Holy Spirit as an actual person, yet says he will be in all of them. So therefore, a person whose being or substance can be in many of them at the same time. And then at Pentecost in thousands more and can continuing 2000 years up to today, it's still as a person dwelling in billions. So no more difficult to understand, or maybe accept would be a better word, 
that God's substance or being can be operating in three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So Jesus points to Holy Spirit as being an advocate between the Father and us. So highlighted them as two separate persons communicating with each other. In John 14, 26, he tells us that the Holy Spirit comes in place of Jesus. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything that I have told you. So therefore, we have what the disciples had, Jesus living with us. The same deal, no less, no more. Jesus living with us, teaching us as he had taught them. He tells them that the Holy Spirit will teach everything and will remind them of everything that he has told them. So by getting familiar with the Bible and Jesus' teachings, we will be familiar with the Holy Spirit, who is teaching us by using the same words today. So we understand the Trinity ought to be equal. In John chapter 14, 28, Jesus tells us that I am going to the Father who is greater than I am. He refers here to the Father being greater, but Jesus had been with the Father in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Jesus was equal with the Father. He gave up some of that equality to take on the form of a man. So for the short time that Jesus gave up his glory here on earth, God was greater than him. Yet after the resurrection, Jesus took the glory and equality back. This finally brings us to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, part of today's gospel reading, where Jesus restored position in the Trinity is announced. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. So here is Jesus as God, after the resurrection, given all authority by God. The three persons are mentioned also today in the Gospel reading where he tells us, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I commanded you. So quite clear instructions of what we need to do, and if we find it difficult telling others the good news and pray for help and opportunities, it's what he wants, so he will help. And the Great Commission takes all spirituality from being a pleasant emotion to action. Service, serving, walking with Jesus, doing what he and the disciples did, telling others the good news of forgiveness, of sin and of eternal life with God. Now, even if the Trinity are so hard to understand, we see evidence of the Holy Spirit as we see lives transformed especially with those who were thought that contact with God was not possible for them. It's quite clear from the Bible that God is made up of three persons. How that works may still seem hard for the theologians to explain. But like with the resurrection, we have Old Testament prophecy about it. In the New Testament, Jesus tells us about it. And Jesus came back to show himself resurrected. And the promised Holy Spirit came to empower people to carry on his work. But there are no explanations of how this worked, no spiritual equations or formulas, just prophecy, teaching and accounts of experience. And like it is with the Trinity, it's clear from Old Testament prophecy, Jesus' teaching and disciples' accounts, but likewise, No explanation, no spiritual equations or formulas, no analysis of how it works. In the first reading from Isaiah today, it helps to see the difference the Spirit of God makes in our lives. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, reminds me of a time on the Isle of Arran, walking up a glen. There were so many birds of prey, so I asked my uncle how easy it was going to be to spot the golden eagles if we were lucky enough to see one. He told me to imagine seeing my front door hovering around in the sky. 
He was right. With a six to eight foot wingspan, what a beautiful sight. There was no mistaking the other birds of prey in that glen. And we sat for three hours watching a pair hunt and take three rabbit kills back to their young. And after each swoop down along the rabbit runs in the bracken, they had to start all over again, soaring to gain their height, ready for the next swoop and hunt. It looked no effort. They seemed to just let go, to just give themselves to the great thermals, lifting them with no effort. I could see Isaiah's meaning. If those eagles had tried to fly, it would have spoilt what appeared to be free flight, going with a power far greater than themselves. And this is the free offer from the Trinity, to accept them, connect with them, trust in them, draw our strength from them, drawing on these thermals to face seemingly impossible tasks and obstacles, to let go and let God. And theologians try and explain the Trinity with their theories, which is good for us. We like to know how things happen and how they could be possible. Augustine suggests it's like our mind. We have memory, understanding and will. And these are all three movements of the same mind. But we have enough in the Bible to accept the Trinity exists and that they are God. But if we still find the Trinity confusing, what we can be sure is that we have living in us the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, a person to replace Jesus. What we can be sure of is that he is a person of God who will never leave us, who will continue to transform us into the image of Jesus. And what we can be sure of is that believing in Jesus will give us eternal life with God. And what we can be sure of is that the Trinity can still be a little bit of a mystery. <laughs> Well, let's get used to it. After all, he is a mysterious God. Amen. So let us affirm our faith in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the faith that we are commissioned to share with the world. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I, I believe and trust in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? who took our human nature, died for us and rose again. I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Catherine will now lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Ever one, sacred three, holy God, the Trinity. O God beyond us, lead us forward to pray. O God beside us, teach us gently to pray. O God within us, still our hearts to pray. Holy God beyond us, you create and sustain all things, but only by the power of self-giving love. We celebrate your creativity this morning, the risk and imagination you demonstrated in making such a wild diversity in the world. The lions and the bumblebees, the Himalayas and the spider's web, the earthworm and the human brain. There is mystery and joy at the heart of creation. Holy God beyond us, we celebrate the mystery and the joy which is found even in us. Son of God beside us, you never leave us comfortless. Always you walk with us, neither too far ahead nor a step behind. And you teach us the love songs of the kingdom. Bless, we pray, those who have not noticed that you are there beside them. 
or have chosen to ignore you. Bless those who are dying of loneliness and those who need you so desperately. In the quiet, we name one or two such people before you and pray that they will raise their eyes to see you. Son of God, beside us. Holy Spirit within us, always you are seeking to infiltrate our lives with peace and strength. Always you are trying to give us more of yourself. And yet often we feel empty and afraid. And so does the community of nations. Fill, we pray, all those dark, dank places of this world with your warm life. The places where violence terrorises the people. The places where hunger stalks the land. And where there are people we know in whom hope is running low. Be for them a summer breeze and a spring of fresh water. Holy Spirit within us. O God beyond us, give us faith. O Christ beside us, give us peace. O Spirit within us, give us life. Ever one. Sacred Three, Holy God, the Trinity. Amen. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And, and also, also with, with you. So now is an opportunity for us to share a sign of peace with one another in whatever appropriate way it might be with people that you're actually living with at the moment or you might w wish to type peace be with you in the comments box beneath this video so let us offer one another a sign of peace peace, peace be, be with, with you, you.
Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and also, also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit without any difference or inequality. We, your Holy Church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty. And so with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ will come again. And so far, the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of Barnabas and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. God, help us to trust you. Help us to know that you are with us. Help us to believe that nothing can separate us from your love revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with us today as we offer ourselves to you. Hear our prayers for others and ourselves and keep us in your care. Amen. Elaine is now going to give a short notice about Christian aid. Hi, it's Elaine. Just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody that gave to St Barnabas Church Christian Aid Fund this year. We managed to collect £405, which is saying something. Uh, we're in very difficult times at the moment. Um, we haven't got together, we haven't had coffee mornings and cake like I planned. Um, so thank you so much to everybody that gave. We will get together next year. Uh, in the meantime, please stay safe everybody and again thank you. Thank you, Elaine, and thank you for all who gave to Christian Aid. We hope that you're able to join us for Zoom Coffee at 11 o'clock. Details of where to find the room are on the um, notice sheet, and you can also ring in any problems to get in touch with me or any of the team. There will be a service of evening prayer at 5.30 this evening. That's 5.30 this evening, and that will be on Facebook Live. Our world continues to be a very challenging place to live. Um, we continue to struggle with the coronavirus and also we have all probably seen the pictures coming out of the US and are aware of the response all around the world. So let's pray for peace, pray for justice and give thanks for those who are working for those things. I believe that prayer changes things. So let's commit to prayer this week that we might see God's kingdom come. So we're now going to sing our final hymn, a hymn again to our Trinitarian God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy.
So a prayer of blessing. God the Father, who has given to his Son the name above every name, strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who is our great High Priest, passed into the heavens, plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Amen. God, the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church, make you faithful servants of Christ the King. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Blessing, blessing and honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Have a great week.